Right, good morning. Um, so excited to be part of the um, Leadership Summit, the 13th um, uh, International uh, Leadership Summit of the Welling um, uh, Women Worldwide. I bring you greetings from the beautiful city of Uyo, Akwaibom State in Nigeria. And um, I know that the Lord is doing a new thing in your midst. These are um, um, unusual times and season. And the issue of um, entrepreneurship uh, being not slothful in business is at the heart of it. Uh, you have given me a very good topic, e-commerce, entrepreneurship through e-commerce. And I'm excited uh, that I'm going to be discussing this with you in the next few uh, minutes. Permit me to share my screen um, so that I can speak through the, the slides. I have a, a prepared um, uh, slides. So the topic is um, as stated on the screen, entrepreneurship um, through e-commerce and your Your, your text is very uh, apt for this moment. Uh, Romans 12, verse 11, not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, saving the Lord. Let me quickly add to this text that we serve the Lord through our business. We serve the Lord when we are engaged in entrepreneurship, we serve the Lord when we're pursuing our career. Indeed, the Bible clearly says that whatever we do, we should do it saving the Lord. And so that you have chosen this um, as your theme for the leadership uh, conference is very apt. And I'm going to talk about the aspect of entrepreneurship through um, e-commerce. All right, so my first word is taken from the book. I don't know how many of you have read the book, The Jewish Phenomenon. It's about the success story, the achievement, uh, orientation of the Jewish people, which you and I know that it's oriented towards the Bible through the word of God. But the, uh, Stephen had this statement to make, and I think it is uh, important for us to begin from this. When entrepreneurial innovation and endeavors are suppressed in any society, likewise, the general um, wealth of the people is also suppressed. This is very true for the, for the church community. If we are not engaged in entrepreneurship, and in particular, innovation, creativity, we're not really adding value to the society. We're doing the kingdom uh, a disservice. So I, I thank you that you have branched out to this, and uh, it is um, something worth uh, talking about. My presentation objective is as follows, um, to discuss the growing importance of e-commerce and how to get started. This is the objective that I hope we should be able to achieve within the next few minutes as I take you through my slides, the growing importance of e-commerce and how to get started, how to plug into, into it. And um, to be able to do that, I have divided my presentation into three models, modules rather, the first one is just a preamble, what we're doing now. Next module would have to deal with the e-commerce business framework. We need to find out how to get started. And then of course, the way forward, um, the key success factors and the benefit statement of um, e-commerce. So I will take you through the various modules, starting with module number one, which is a preamble. Again, I have a quotation from Martin Luther, and he did say, the prosperity of a country depends not on the abundance of its revenue, but it consists in its main of education, enlightenment, and character. This is what this conference is all about. It's about acquiring knowledge and being able to participate in world creation of our various nations and really be the light of the world, the salt of the earth that our Lord and Master uh, expects us um, to be. Now, if you look at a, 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 an economy, a national economy or a global economy, 
it consists of so many players. But usually we look at the big players and uh, uh, look down on the small players. But I, I, I give you to know that the small players, the small and medium enterprises actually constitute a vital building blocks of any economy. No economy can survive without a large presence, a large presence of um, entrepreneurs who are doing one thing or the other and who are actually even helping the big corporations to find their space in the national economy. So what this means is that there is room for everybody. There's room for you to start. There's, this is even the way the kingdom is. You know, as long as the earth remained, seed, time, and harvest, you know, uh, shall not cease. So we are to plug into the national economy from wherever um, area of competence, area of passion that, uh, that we have. That the entrepreneurship is usually a very vital uh, link in any national economy. Um, there was a study some years back by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, and they came up with this summation that the micro, small, and medium entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship is the engine of growth of any economy. And this holds for big economies and small economies. Uh, you know, if you look at even big economies like the German, German economy, they have a very large presence of micro, small, and medium enterprises, including cooperative societies. And these are the vital links that supply economic nutrients to even the big system and the uh, economic fundamentals. So I ask that you pay a close attention to this because it means you and I can participate. It means you and I are able to do one thing or the other. And in terms of its contribution, uh, I'm talking about entrepreneurs, uh, uh, small and medium enterprises. In terms of contribution, you know, um, to employment generation and even uh, gross domestic product GDP. Even in very mature economies, you can see the number. The numbers speak for itself. You know, these uh, micro uh, companies contribute 61% of employment generation in the UK, 40 in India. Nigeria is a whooping 84%. Globally, it, it lies between 60 to 70%. And in terms of contribution to um, GDP, it, it shows between 40 to 50 percent across board. So that should capture our attention that if any country ignores uh, the small and medium enterprises, it does that at its economic peril. And that's why most countries around the world have set up uh, structures to be able to assist and hold, find finances, find knowledge sharing for this uh, sector of the economy, because really and truly, growth depends on them. They are very resilient because um, these companies are like seeds to future companies, to big companies. They provide the seedling for future great companies. There's no company on earth that starts from the top. They all start like Mickey Mouse company, Pop and Mom, Corner Shop, you know, they all start small and then they grow into big systems and big enterprises. So it is important for us to know that no country no society can ignore uh, SMEs, small and medium enterprises, and hope to, um, to gain traction in building a viral big um, uh, economy. Look at the great companies of the world today. All of these companies that I put on the screen all started very, very small. Some like Pop and, Mo uh, Pop, Pop and Mom uh, type of uh, corner shop and all that, but they, they, they have a great legacy, number of years that they have put in, building one block at a time. And so it's very encouraging and heartwarming that we too can do it. Maybe in future, we will join the league of companies that have existed over a hundred um, years. And now the big one. The big one is that yes, entrepreneurship has a fair share of its contribution to the economy. But when you add e-commerce to entrepreneurship, then you will be beginning to see a trend in the world today that we're not just having entrepreneurs, but we're having e-entrepreneurs. We have people like you and I who have been able to use the uh, internet, electronic um, platform to be able to do business that they would otherwise have not been able to do uh, the old way. 
you know. So we're now gradually seeing a rise in the presence of e entrepreneurs. These are entrepreneurs who are making money um, from the from the net, who are not limited by boundaries and by uh, um, laws of nations, and able to navigate around the world. And I think that is where um, our greatest interest and passion should lie that we're able to contribute to this new phenomenon, the new normal of entrepreneurs who are not limited by geography, who are not limited by national laws, who have the whole world as their market and who can operate from any, any part of the world without any uh, hindrance. And I think that is something very exciting for the world that we live today. So we do have e-commerce and entrepreneurship. What does it do? It does so much. An e-entrepreneur is an individual willing to take a risk of investing his time or her time and money in an electronic business that has the potential to make money and make so much more money. Many years ago, I used to tell people that internet is not a tool. Internet is the business. Your phone is not a, a device. It is the business. Everything around about uh, the web today offers us a platform, offers us a um, leading edge that we could not even have imagined many years back. So there are a lot of folks today who get on the net for the wrong thing, for the wrong side, you know, for the wrong passion. But the net is actually a great advantage, especially for those who dare to be entrepreneurs. So there is um, the rise of e-entrepreneurs and who are willing to take risks and do things that make them not just to be job seekers, rather not to be job seekers, but to be job providers, doing things that um, you are not limited, doing things that um, you cannot uh, imagine the limitless possibilities. And the idea is that let's move a, a large presence of people from being job seekers to being job providers. And here comes the internet. The internet easily gives you a plug in, gives you an advantage, gives you um, uh, the leading time that is um, enough if you are moving from school or from employment to um, uh, entrepreneurship, the internet offers an advantage that um, makes it possible for everybody to be part of it. This, uh, we're living in a digital revolution era. What does it do? The revolution has changed customers' behavior. The internet has defined our buying pattern, our buying behavior, our needs, our demand level. And therefore, it behoves on those who should provide services to take a look at what the internet has done to the very vital constituent of uh, their, their, their business, the customers. People are looking for convenience. People are looking for borderless uh, trade. People are looking for who were uh, years gone by uh, operating uh, in an analog <laughs> mode are now taking their business into the internet. But more than that, the internet has made a lot of people to become their own bosses rather than looking for work. So e-commerce is a fast growing plug in to the national and global economy. And I guess that's why we're here to talk about it. What is e-commerce? E-commerce is just people, companies and people buying and selling over the net, over the internet. It's about selling over the internet. It's about buying over the internet. So you have the consumers at one point, and then you have the supplier of services, goods and services at the other time. I remember years ago when the internet debuted, and I was telling my class then that the internet would define new businesses. And we took a, a, a case study of um, um, uh, dispatch businesses. Uh, business for DHL, for example, courier businesses. And we say, well, in the age of internet, nobody's posting letters, nobody's doing uh, things that you carry mail from there to there. But that there is a new business. A new business is that the warehouses are located far away from the, where the customer is. But the customer has access to those goods and place order electronically with so much speed. So the business of um, courier, it now moves from letters because you now have email, you don't have a physical surface mail. Moves from emails to lo logistics, you know, to supply chain management. And a lot of us are finding that our businesses are being modeled one way or the other after this new 
trend, this uh, revelation, the internet um, digital um, re uh, revolution. So uh, it's important for us to um, also have a distinction here between e-commerce and e-business. You have heard e-commerce, you have heard e-business. So as part of my presentation this morning, I need to lay a clear distinction so that we know which one belongs um, where. I have a short definition. Uh, E-commerce refers to just conducting, <laughs> uh, buying and selling over the internet, you know, which is what every one of us does. But e-business is modeling my business uh, approach, you know, around the internet. For example, um, I, I can deal with my uh, accounting, for example, through the internet. I can put my data in the cloud. I'm doing e-business. I'm turning my business around the internet. I'm using the internet as a platform to conduct my business, as opposed to e-commerce, which is just buying and selling. There may be a lot of companies on both sides. E-commerce is a subset of uh, e-business. I hope the distinction is clear. E-business is doing my business around the internet. E-commerce is buying and selling on the internet. These definitions are important so that we lay the building blocks and then go on to discuss how to get started. You have also heard different models of e-commerce, e rather, uh, B2B. B2B means business to business. B2B means business to business. In other words, you can have two businesses transact, uh, conduct their transaction over the internet. They're not dealing with consumers. They're dealing one business to the other. You have Shopify. In Nigeria, you have Jumai. You have uh, Kunga. What do these people do? They relate with um, suppliers of um, goods and then bring them to a platform and offer their platform for them to reach to their customers. You know, so they provide a vital um, aspect of uh, e-commerce e in our world today. B2C, B2C means business to consumer. An example of Amazon, they have a platform, but they deal directly with consumers. You can place your order, you can place your order there. And then you have C to C, consumer to consumer. So those are the three models of e-business as we look forward to engage in any of this. Now the statistics are startling. In the US, as of December 26, 2022, the annual average annual pay, annual income of an e-entrepreneur was a whopping $68,000. That works out at an average uh, pay uh, per hour of 22.8. Tell me what kind of business you can do to get this kind of, um, this kind of um, uh, income. So therefore, the e-commerce is a wealth portal. It, it gives you so much advantage that uh, you could not have imagined doing anything outside of the internet. And it beckons on us not to be onlookers, but also to be participants. And I believe that is what this conference and this topic is all about. The statistics are there. Global e-commerce sales is stacking up, is growing. If you check the graph that I just put them from 2021 to 2026 or so, the projection is that this business globally will attract 8.1 trillion business. The church must be part of this um, uh, wealth, you know? And so we need to plug in and um, um, country by country, you can see the countries that have a very large presence as of 2022, China has a very large presence. You have heard of Ali Express and all other um, e-commerce uh, platforms that are coming out of China, making China to be one of the economic giants in, in the world today. And so um, the statistics shows that as long as you engage the um, e-business, uh, the better for the economy. Now, the next, this slide shows us what consumers do, um, what consumers goods are making with on the e-commerce platform, okay? Uh, number of people purchasing on, um, uh, purchasing consumer goods on the internet, 3.78 billion people out of 8 billion people on the globe today. Total annual spending, 3.8 uh, trillion, <laughs> you know, average annual revenue per consumer uh, goods, uh, e-commerce user 
you know, $1,000 and so on. So these successes are just meant to whet our appetite, to see what is happening around about us. May we be part of this um, wealth um, uh, phenomenon, you know? So I'll leave the rest of the statistics. They just speak to the need for us to be part of this uh, phenomenon. Uh, this one talked about the payment method, digital and mobile wallet payments is gaining traction, gaining traction that even phone companies are now offering wallet because they must be an, an acceptable risk-free payment system that guarantees that I can stay in any part of the globe and conduct my business without fear, without fear that my transactions will be scammed and all that. And so you can see for yourself that people are working flat out to make sure that the internet becomes a good place for all of us, whether as business persons or as consumers. Now, let me go to module two, if you don't mind my speed. Um, module two has to do with uh, the framework, the e-commerce business framework. And I have a quotation from Jane Paul Agu, CEO of uh, Law Real. He said, e-commerce isn't the cherry on the cake. It is what? A new cake. Let's not cherry pick. Let's not think that, oh, it's just happening. It's a fluke. It would disappear. It is the new normal, <laughs> if I may use that, that, uh, uh, that uh, expression. It is the new cake. It is the new phase of business. And we must be uh, there when it does matters. Now, um, Various uh, e-commerce uh, models, uh, which is of interest to us. I've already talked about the B2C, B2B. Then you have B2B to B to C, <laughs> you know, which is another way you can structure your internet business to uh, deal with. I'm selling from business to business and then the business sells to the consumer. You have B2G, business selling to government. You have C to B, consumer, sorry, it should be B, C to C. Uh, consumer to, no, it should be B to C, consumer to uh, business to consumer, then D to C, direct to consumer. I would explain that when we talk about uh, um, a shop, uh, um, when we talk about the met method of uh, sending goods across, then C to C, consumer to consumer. These are the various formats you can use. It is left for you and I to see where we plug in. Am I going to operate at the B to C, B to B? B to B to C and so on and so forth. I'll come to that later in the presentation. Now, what I'm going to do here is a startup kit. A startup kit. What if I want to start today, right now? What do I need to know? What do I need to do? What are these baby steps I need to take? Number one, straightforward e-commerce selling goods on the internet will require that I find product opportunities and I must make a choice as to what to sell. I'm selling to people I may not even meet. I'm operating in regions I've never traveled to, may not even travel to, but I need to find a connecting rod. I need to find something that brings me to the rest of the world. And it is in what we call product opportunities. What are the trends? What are the things people need? Why, why, what are the things people can find within their borders and they want to hop around the world and look for it? And then I need to make a choice, a product portfolio. What am I going to sell? There are so many things that can possibly come into my attention, but I need to choose the one that I want to sell to the rest of the world. Uh, my honest advice is that you don't just sell for selling things, so for selling sex rather than You sell because you have passion. You sell because you want to meet a need. You sell because you want to make a difference. So it must be something that you are wholly spiritual and body involved in. It's not something you are doing today, never to continue tomorrow. Next is to thoroughly research your competitions, uh, competitors rather. Who are the people doing almost the same thing I'm trying to do? How are they doing it? How different should mine be? How am I gonna win customer traffic in my favor? So that is for me a second step that needs to be um, taken to find out what others are doing, study those who are doing well, and also study those who are not doing well, but copy those who are doing well and learn from those, uh, uh, learn to do better than those who are not doing uh, well. The third steps will be to, for me to write a business plan. 
uh, and set my goals. These internet businesses, e-commerce business, what am I going to get out of it? What are the numbers I'm looking at? What sales am I going to uh, make? Which uh, consumer group am I targeting? Adult, female, male, uh, young persons, and all that and all that. You said such goals. All of that are contained in a document we usually refer to as a business plan. And once you do that, you then set up uh, your online store. Mark the word online store. This day and age, you don't need a physical store. What you need for an online store is a name, uh, principally a name and your brand and your brand, you know, a name and your brand. And then, of course, you need to choose your shipping strategy. Remember that you are interfacing with people that are miles, thousands of miles away from you. So how do you get the goods across to them? And then, of course, you launch your business, your internet business, and then continually um, uh, adopt uh, improvement strategies to be able to uh, uh, win a space, no matter who else is competing with you. Those are the step-by-step um, -step approach. I will take on a few of them in greater details as I move on. Uh, I'm just giving you a product gallery, things that um, are eyes catchy, top-notch products that people are looking for, usually things that has to do with electronics, travel items, even food items, books and all that, uh, make um, a good list to shop from, to start from, you know, but look at um, what other e-commerce um, platforms are selling. Look at the reviews that go with some of these products, which are the ones that people are, you know, falling on top of each other for, which are the things that are trendy. And most than that, what are the future, future uh, products? future things so that you can arrive there before your competitors. I just needed to show you this, a gallery of products. You can do deep research on this, deep reflection on this and pick your area of interest. Usually um, things that, uh, things people use on the go, like uh, audio, visual uh, stuff, electronic stuff, watches and things like that, uh, sports things and all that. I, again, if you look at the internet, if you look at the world of um, e-commerce, you see what other people are, are, are taking to the market. And then you pick your, your area of interest and your choice. Now, this is an important uh, model in e-commerce. It's called drop shipping, drop shipping model. Drop shipping means that I don't own a warehouse, I don't own goods, but I own the market. And I deal with those who own a warehouse and those who earn, uh, own um, a business and then make money while I bring them to the market, while I connect these stores, these warehouses to a market. Let's take uh, this simple model uh, on the screen now. Um, you have the customer on the one hand and then you have the suppliers on the other hand. So this is what does happen. I am an e-commerce person. I have my store. Your store is at the middle there. And then I use my Instagram page or status on WhatsApp or TikTok or Facebook or Twitter to place adverts on goods that I don't own, goods that I don't control. But I have an arrangement with the supplier that, yes, I'm going to advertise your goods, bring customer traffic to your, to your own store through my own store. And then I make money while you also make money. So the customer places order, uh, and in this example, pays you uh, $200 uh, pay order. And you've agreed with the uh, supplier that um, uh, you get a wholesale price of $150. Uh, and so immediately you, you make <laughs> an instant $50 profit. So once the order is placed, you pass it straight to the supplier, OK? And the customer and the and, and pay the cost uh, the supplier the 150. The supplier then in step three supplies the products straight to the customer. You have facilitated commerce, e-commerce way, without the hassle of looking for a shop, without the hassle of having a physical billboard, without the hassle of even leaving your room before you make money. And so drop shipping is an important thing that those who engage in e-commerce must know. 
uh, and, and, and use. Researching your competitors is important, as I have said earlier on, but what are the things you should focus on? Focus on what their business models is. How are they doing it? Are they selling multiple items or just one item? What social media channels do they utilize? Who is their target market? How do they push their sales? And so on and so forth. So find out what, so that you can then define what is best, uh, best, a best case for your, your own um, business. Uh, one of the steps that we earlier on discussed was how to build your online store. Uh, what are the things you should uh, note? Uh, Joel Anderson had this to say, you can't just open a website and expect people to flaunt it. Really, if you really want to succeed, you have to create traffic. You know, So online store is about traffic, number of people visiting your website and not just visiting your website, having a high conversion ratio visit and then they do business with you they buy eventually you know um so you need also for you to have the, the traffic you need to also to choose a host platform that can help you direct traffic easily uh, platform like shopify makes it easy so you plug into their own platform and then they offer you a wider uh, universe of uh, customers a wider reach which you can then um, uh, profit from. So it's important for you to know that yes, there are platforms that can give you the initial initial uh, plug-in. And it's better for you to have an, in, it's better than having an independent platform, trying to build uh, a brand, trying to create an um, impression that many people would visit, you know, millions of people visit this big platform a minute. And so if you are there, chances are that they would stop by at your own display. When building up your e-commerce store, choose a theme that suits your target audience and prices that reflect the success you envision. It's important for your uh, store, your e-commerce store, to have a proper um, uh, branding, a proper code, a proper catchy phrase that resonates with the market. Because people don't really have time to, to, to stick around. They just, on the go, blocking and seeing the pop-ups on the say, social media, on your web page. They just glance through it. If there's something magnetizing, they're likely to go a step further and then um, uh, discover that you have something that they may need. Naming your e-commerce business is something very important. The name must be memorable. Who would have thought about a name like Facebook? 50 years ago, Facebook. The first time you heard about it, you have to stop and say, face what? <laughs> you know, Instagram, for example, and all that. So you need to look for a name that is memorable, that resonates with the um, with your target audience. And so also is your logo. It must be, if you are targeting the, uh, uh, the, uh, the new generation, the young people, it must be something that is attractive to their attention, that will attract the attention rather. And then the, your color code must be right and right, okay? So um, you need to promote your online store. You don't just open a website and it become a, a, a steel site. Your website should be on the go. Your website should actually be self-improving, self-renewal, you know, self-renewed, you know? After you have launched your store, uh, uh, you have to be able to, engage the right traffic. Traffic is the number of people stopping by your store. And you have to create what it takes for people to stop by your store. Anything else can wait until you are sure you can generate the traffic because it's the traffic that contains the potential customers. Mark the word, they are potential. They may or may not buy. Good traffic is good, but conversion is important. Where they visit and then they're able to buy. The secret to e-commerce marketing is to have the right channel Sometimes you need influencers. Influencers are other people who direct traffic to your site. For example, if you have celebrities who have their own audience, you have people that have podcasts who have their own audience, you have people that have their own web page and they, are, they have followers. Now, if you drop a link, your link on their web page, they will be able to route the traffic to you. So influencers are important for us seeking to promote our business, especially if you're a newcomer. You need this kind of people um, 
to help you build the traffic. If traffic is very important, then you need people that can help you um, do that, you know? And then of course, um, success factors, uh, success, uh, uh, the steps to step guide. I've just run through this, in, you know, unique selling proposition, you need to have what it takes for people to resonate with you, mission statement, key performance indicators, how are you gonna measure your attainment, target audience, who are you targeting? channels, marketing, and all that. All these are things you need to go through. I will leave the, um, the uh, presentation for your use hereafter. And I hope that this uh, presentation is recorded so that you can um, look at it again after this time. My take is that the future is here. Really and truly the future is here. If history is a guide, investment in building a smarter e-business business now will pay outsized returns in the post-pandemic world. Look at what the pandemic did. It amplified e-commerce. Indeed, this virtual presentation that we made had existed before the pandemic, but the pandemic made it prominent that we don't need to travel across borders. We can do many things you know, together. This is a business. Those who invent in um, Zoom and uh, Team and all that have really ripped in uh, superior profit because they have seen that the future is here. And for us at this conference, the future is here. As you go back to your various countries, please know that um, doing nothing is not an option. Standing still, standing in one place is not an option because if you do the race of the world has shifted before you can acknowledge they've gone it's gone if you are not moving forward you are falling back you know you don't have to know all it takes <laughs> you know to embrace the future all you need to do is just one step forward at the at the time so moving forward is important my last module is about way forward and I quote from Thomas Jefferson, who said, if you want something you have never heard, you must be willing to do something you have not never done. My dear sisters, it doesn't matter that you have not done this before. It just does not matter that you don't even know what the internet is. I guess you do. It just does not matter that you have not figured out what you can do with the internet. In this segment, I'm gonna show you that it can be done. It has been done and that all we need to do is internally to embrace this new normal and take advantage of it, do more research even after this presentation and plug in. But first, let's look at the benefits, the e-commerce benefits. Number one is low cost. Startup cost is very low. You don't need expensive investment in uh, shops, virtual, uh, physical shops, machinery and all that. You don't even need, you need just a laptop or your, um, your phone, your, your smartphone and all that. So the entry cost is very low. And that is good news for all of us. That means that anybody can start. You are, nobody is going to be limited by financial impediments. And then feed, uh, speed. You can reach the whole world just a click away. And flexibility. You can turn your business right side up. You know, without having to go and get approvals from here and there. You know, it's a faster buying process. People are doing transactions that is worth thousands of uh, dollars in a click, just an instant, pop. And then once you cl click the button, pay. <laughs> it's done. You know, no more hassle of trying to do extensive uh, shop to shop visit and all that. And then you know, it offers you product catalog. You can display it on the go, wider customer universe. You are reaching the entire world and so on and so forth. Customer data inside. One of the things that is um, making money in the world today is data harvest. As people are visiting your site, they're dropping information about them. The big tech companies are making billions of money, you know, just managing data, just getting data. Sometimes you fill those forms. You know, those forms get uh, into uh, a database that they can then analyze and be determine things like uh, buying pattern, geographical um, 
um, areas where you know you have huge concentration of buying power and all that. So you have access to data which can help you maximize your business and your potential. Scalability, you can you know, forward <laughs> ever back well, never your business because the internet is just there for you. And I used to joke with my students that today, there's absolutely nothing you cannot do without having everything you need to do, you need to have to do it. When we were studying in school, we read the hard way. But today, just a click away, you have all the research materials, you have the resource materials, you have even more than enough. That choice is even becoming a problem. You can click on a subject matter, you have millions of uh, articles and stuff like that. So it is easier than otherwise. Reviews and ratings, you know, one of the things, and I think we'll talk about this uh, when we're talking about key success factors, is that you must engage your customers to review your, your offering, your, your product offering, and rate it. What that does, it enables other people who see favorable reviews to stop by your shop. For example, if I want to buy online, the first thing after I look at the price, look at um, the short description, is to look at the reviews. How many people have been satisfied using this product in the time past? Once the review is five over five, it encourages me to pay more attention. You know, So you have ability to be rated. And that rating is goodwill. It's an asset that would encourage much more traffic. And then, of course, increased profit margin. It flows from the point that your cost is minimal, and then you make the margin. You have very little overhead to talk about. And then, of course, you can target your market effectively, directly, and with um, the lowest um, uh, cost. Now, uh, what are the key success factors? Please pay attention to this part, because um, Every business has its own tricks. <laughs> E-commerce has its own tricks. I call them the KSF, the key success factors. Number one is that you must seek to deliver great customer experience. Don't forget that people have very little attention span when they are solving the net. Why? They're watching their data. They're also trying to figure out many things. And they're buffeted with so many things. So you must do something that will catch the attention of your customers or your target market and make them enjoy uh, spending time on your page. Um, Safe service content is important. People should be able to navigate from one menu on your page, on your web page to the other. You know, you have loops, you know, you're clicking on something, something is beckoning your attention and all that. And people should enjoy the pictures, should just the imagery and, and, and the fun of shopping. You know, even when we shop in supermarket in a physical sense, you, you have the ambience. The ambience keeps you there. You know, you're doing window shopping, but you're spending more time looking through. And who knows? You'll buy eventually. And then, of course, the other thing you need to include that will make your uh, customers have great experience is frequently asked questions, FAQ. You know? No matter how much information is out there, people still need to know. And so you need to create a, a menu for those concerns that customers should have or have had and how to get out their concern result. Frequently asked questions are very important. When I look at the net, when I go on the net, I always go to this area because from this area, you can do anything and everything without sending a mail to the, um, to the provider of service or to the owner of the web page because somebody else has that problem and they have resolved it with a short question and answer. Live chat is also very important. Live chat is also very important. You must build your page to be able to communicate on a real time basis with people who have concern. They, they may not want to go through the frequently asked question or send you an email or contact you otherwise, but you have a live chat, sometimes robotic, <laughs> live chats help people deal with issues uh, where, so that they don't get frustrated and then leave your site and not never to come back. In incentivize product reviews. Every product you offer on the net, ask people to review whether that product met their need in terms of a product description, whether it meets their need in terms of speed of delivery, whether it meets their need 
in every area. And then they will leave a review. What you do with those reviews, if you incentivize it, you will encourage people to do more reviews and you make people to love your page. Number two, focus on cons conversion optimization. The truth is that 69% uh, of people who visit websites will leave without buying something. And so your success factor is to be able to convert the 31% to maximize, even reduce that number in your own case. So optimization of conversion by making people to buy, you know, much more is, is important. How do you do that? Create time-limited offers. When you do searching, people are rush, rushing in to buy before the, <laughs> the time is over. Time limited offers. Yes, uh, this is offered for the next 24 hours. This is offered, but please don't tell a lie if it is not <laughs> so. You know, this is offered for this amount of time and all that. And, and so once you do that, um, you are going to have a higher conversion. Uh, conversion uh, factor. Now, next is to, oh my God. I hope I'm still being heard. Okay. Next is to uh, launch a cat abandonment email campaign. In other words, if somebody uh, puts a product in a cart and didn't complete the payment, didn't complete the offer, reach him by a, an email. Remind him that his cat is still uh, awaiting uh, completion. You know, um, that will help in conversion. Some will say, oh yeah, I, I think I should give a second thought to this product and come back and set up a retargeting campaign. If somebody has visited your shop before, send him mails, send him product, new product arrivals, send him information that will make him to um, stay connected to your, um, to your page. Work out your store optimization. 44% of online shoppers uh, do that uh, through their friends about buying experience and tell their friends about bad experiences. Let your shop be able to attract very favorable um, uh, reviews. You do that by optimizing your website, improve your website speed. Speed is important. We're offering people um, and speed, okay? So speed is very, very important. Uh, your, your internet speed, the, the uh, ability to navigate between the modules on your, the, on your web page should um, uh, uh, be taken into consideration. Create intuitive navigation bars, you know, that make people curious, you know, and then create great product page. You know, those product display, you, you must, um, you must uh, be able to, you know, put something that is eye catchy, you know, and then of course, display related products. I'm shopping for this, but you pop up uh, this uh, related products um, a page so that people, you say people who have shopped for this also have shopped for this. You are expanding the universe, uh, the shopper's universe to be able to make up his mind or her mind and then optimize your store search engine. You must put in place a search engine that when people are trying to figure out what else you have or what else they may need. Uh, they can search within your, 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 your store and find more. And also if you have links uh, on the internet, if wherever they can search, they will route, the, the traffic will be routed back to, um, to, um, to your store. Very important, the last point, check how your store looks on mobile devices. Today, a lot of shoppers, do so through their mobile devices, not through a computer, uh, you know? So if you have a web page that is not well displayed on um, uh, mobile devices, you are losing out on a large percentage of those who shop online. See whether the, um, the, um, your web page is well displayed uh, on mobile devices, whether iOS or Android, you know? You must uh, engage your, the designers of your web page to be able to do uh, offer you that advantage. Next key uh, key success factor is 
updating inventory frequently. Okay, people are buying, and as they buy, there should be um, an automatic reduction in the number so that you know that those products are uh, uh, are due for replenishment. You know, because it is very frustrating for you to place an order, and at the time you are making payment or signing out or conclu concluding your cut, and you are told that oh, this product is out of stock. So you must constantly update your inventory and make sure that what you are known for is always available uh, for um, uh, repeat customers. Best selling products tend to quickly fade away, which is why inventory update is very important. Constantly look for new product ideas and bring them on board. Do not rely on just a few products to drive yourselves. It means you have to have a, a gallery of products. Rather offer new arrivals to your existing customers and frequently test new product ideas based on Google Trend. So these are some of the things that we must do to um, move forward. Uh, I would say that um, e-commerce, a five-star e-commerce is the road ahead. I, I completely recommend this, commend this to you. And I wish that every one of us, every one of us should fulfill Romans 12, 11 by just the e-commerce way not slothful, not slothful in business, but fervent in the spirit, you know? The Lord Jesus said, do business till I come. This is an easy plug-in and we must be part of it. Remember that nothing is changed by mediocre performance, help to be the very best and in whatever you do. The best time you could have uh, done e-commerce uh, was yesterday, was 20 years ago, but the next best time is now. I commit, I, I ask that everyone, after you've gone back to your various countries, should attempt an e-commerce uh, business. Greatness is not a function of circumstance. Greatness, as it turns out, is largely a matter of conscious choice. Make the choice. James Collins, the author of Good to Great Book, had that advice to offer us. I'm just rounding up. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will be done. E-commerce and entrepreneurship, what a wonderful combination. It gives us the velocity. It gives us capacity. It gives us speed, just like an aircraft taking against the wings. Against all the economic crises in our various countries, we can actually operate a borderless business that is immune to local domestic politics, local domestic bad uh, policy and all that. You know, if you're in the countries where foreign exchange is scarce, <laughs> you e-commerce gives you access to foreign currencies, you know? All you need to open a local account that can receive uh, your, your winnings uh, on the global space. So I, I, I see e-commerce as, uh, as the wing, the wing, the wing, the wing, the wing over the winds, the wing over the winds. We, we can complain about anything and everything, but you have a wing that will be able to suppress and help you to balance just like we do in aerodynamics and then of course i i, I think that um, um this gives us an economic balance of power you know i've seen the internet i've seen the tech business give people more power look at what the tech companies are doing today they are more powerful first and foremost they influence our behavior they tell us what we want to do they now have moving into politics determining what views they should advance politically so it gives us the balance of power. If we're able to pray and bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring the way of the kingdom, it is a, an important portal for preaching. It's an important portal for discipling the nation. When the Lord said, discipling the nation, I, I think this is an easy way to, to win back that economic, that balance of power, how be it economically. I hope you know that the, the last fight of the enemy is gonna be economic, it's not going to be religious. It's not going to be spiritual. It's going to be economic. Concept of 666, no one buys, no one sells. Because in the economy, all are connected. Rich, poor, you know, white, black, everybody is connected. So whoever have the right of way in the economic space always have the balance of power. And e-commerce is an easy, one of the easiest way to do so. I believe willing women for daring to um, uh, broaden their horizon into this kind of subject matter 
It is only that you are going to soar and soar and soar and go higher and higher. It's actually my prayer, but you need to take the next step. Next step is criti critical. You need to know that it's not going to come easy, but that if you try and the Lord being with us, you are going to have uh, something to tell in the next one year. Uh, uh, ladies and sisters in the faith, we are at this point where I say to you, you are a click away from building a great e-commerce business, just a click away. And what would you do? I'd like to encourage you to get on with it. But please, when you do, make sure that you are not looking for the light at the end of the tunnel. Shine the light even from the beginning of the tunnel. You know, you know those guys that go underground to build tunnel. They have their own lights on their <laughs> on their face. You know, so they provide light. They build the tunnel. But a lot of folks are standing outside and say, "We can see light at the end of the tunnel." Yeah. Oh, maybe we should go in. But we should be the trailblazer by lighting the tunnel even from the beginning. All I'm saying to you is that there's no time to waste. We need to get it done, and I believe that we can if we try. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you on this very important uh, subject matter. I have enjoyed myself, I hope you have, and I'm willing to take any questions if there's any provision for, for us. Thank you very much, Welling Women, for a great job that you are doing. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make you to fulfill Romans 12, 11, even through this leadership conference and have a testimony to show. May the Lord on the last day say to you, well done, Thou good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. This is the end of my presentation. I can take questions if I'm allowed to do so.